everyone, and welcome back to Bows and Company. I am your host, Emily O, and I'm joined by my company for this week. Hello, Mom. Welcome to the pod once again. Hello, Emily. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you. I am so excited about today's episode because I feel like we have a lot to talk about. Good. And it's been such a busy week. We have been working, working on the home front so much on Emily O and Bows. And first of all, I love your sweater. It is divine. Thank you. I have to say it. It, it could be one of my bows is my sweater I, I it love it be. yes this it's rich soft purple. it's kind of like lilac yeah it's gorgeous um Thank you. speaking of which what are your bows and lows well for sure Elizabeth being home was a bow yes mm-hmm. always a bow when I see my kids in their <laughs> home so that's a good one and then probably just a little fun one I don't know if you're watching the video and you can kind of see it next to Emily but I did a little pumpkin craft. Oh, yes, you did, Anne. <laughs> and I actually brought it out when Elizabeth was home. And she's looking at me like, what's going on? Yeah. And I just took white pumpkins and I can't stop looking at them. They're beautiful. I took white pumpkins and upholstery nail heads. Yes. And upholstery nail heads are a nice detail on different pieces of furniture. And they come in like silver, brass, antique brass. So I ordered from Amazon some antique brass ones quickest little easiest little craft it's not messy and i made a pumpkin display that i'm looking at right now that I, frankly i think it's spectacular it is spectacular i posted this both on my instagram and tiktok so if you want to see a visual if you're just audio listening to this be sure to check it out it's so easy it's not messy you could just order the upholstery nail heads on amazon um mm-hmm. they were like what 15 dollars for a pack of 500 you said $12.90. And honestly, the reason I'm saying it's spectacular is because it was so simple. Yes. Yes. Like that's the only reason it's so easy. And it was really fun. So fun. And it would also be great for uh, autumn tablescape or your yes. Thanksgiving table. If you're hosting something for Halloween, I would say that it's like an elevated chic way to decorate a pumpkin. And it's pretty low cost. Well, and you just, if you don't know what a nail head is, you just like push them in and you make different patterns. So I made an E which is really handy because it goes for either you or Elizabeth. I made it for her because she was coming home. Yes. But now that it's here, it's for you. <laughs> and then I did a polka dot one and some different patterns. It's wonderful. It's so, so creative. Did you just think of this all on your own? Okay. Well, I thought of it on my own the other day because I was trying to think what would be a really simple pumpkin craft to do. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking back when you guys were little in Girl Scouts, I used to get um, straight pins that had colored heads on them. Oh, yes. And that was like a really easy craft because there was no mess. Yes. You know, so if you've got a troop or you have a birthday party or right. something and they're old enough that they're not going to hurt themselves. Absolutely. And then you could just push the straight pins into the pumpkin and make signs on it. I love it. You, I mean, you, you could have a child sitting there for a very long time. Yes. yes. But they have to be school age because it's straight pins. So I was kind of thinking back to that craft and then I was trying to think what would have the same effect and I thought of these and then I did google it and other people apparently have done it but I have never seen it before I love it it's so creative and um it really catches your eye it's kind of like a designer pumpkin it is like a designer pumpkin it's giving (laughs) it's giving decorator pumpkins yes yes right and then you can also mix it in and then I'll stop talking about this but I did I have a big bowl with little mini white pumpkins that Mm -hmm. I did it to as well and then it's kind of cute if you just have four or five plain pumpkins and then you throw a couple of these in i love it i love it's not it. a commitment it's no it's not. very easy and fun and you could also do it on orange pumpkins we prefer white pumpkins because like i said i think it's chicer but or gourds. gourds you could do it on those big gourds uh, and yeah you could um put your address yes laura was working with us yesterday and she loved them as well and she she suggested your address i i think that's brilliant yes yes ours was kind of long so it would have wrapped maybe around yeah. the pumpkin <laughs> you would have needed a whole village of pumpkins right but, but like your initial for your last name or something is I love really it. cute you so, could also do it if you're hosting a table or oh. having a dinner party you could put each oh person's gosh. like on a mini white one you could put each person's initial at their seat that's adorable i just thought of that right now i mean Brilliant. backing off of the monogram Love again it. it's spectacular this spectacular. is a spectacular that would be so cute i know i just <gasps> i love it you have to do this if you're listening at home it's Wait, so easy you could even spell out if you did a tablescape or across your mantle you could do you know you could spell out your last name yeah. or a word a, a word. letter on each pumpkin yep Go, okay immediately go get nobody pumpkins panic and some remain nail calm heads. yes <laughs> this is a run don't walk situation well, and you mentioned that you could even have if you've got a book club or you have a group of friends or something or you want to have friends over 
little appetizers, a pumpkin board yes. and some wine and some spritzes. Yeah. And you could just get out your box of 500 nail heads. Yeah. And you could get you could get silver brass an antique brass you could so choose any had finish a selection. you like but what i like about it is that sometimes you know you go over for like a craft or it's you know a lot to do where it's a big commitment this is so chill you well and you can talk while you do it right. i never liked when you're not you, covered in paint no <laughs> leaving glue right. is stuck to your fingers no this is literally you push the and if you make a mistake you pull it out and it's not a big your pumpkin's deal. still okay yes. yes i love it okay so that was a very long-winded bow but that is for sure my bow what is your bow what is my bow for this week? I know what my low is for sure. Not to focus on the negative. Um, I don't know what my bow is. Hmm. It's been such a fast week. I feel like it flew by. I feel like we've just been grinding on the Emily All Bows front. We did a lot of filming and shooting content, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would just say that my bow is working on Emily All Bows and just fall fashion in general. Mm-hmm. I think we've had the best time with shooting content and finding new looks. And I would say that Laura has been a huge bow for us. You know, working Laura with her is. for the past month, I just feel like we've really been able to see a difference mm-hmm. and such an improvement. So that's my bow. My low, which I briefly <laughs> talked about on my Instagram story the other day. So Monday morning I woke up and I immediately knew something was wrong. And we have all been there before where you just sleep on your neck weirdly and you wake up and you have like the worst crank. That's what I'm calling it. Crick, crank. Crick. I've never crick. heard of a crank, oh, but a crick. crick. A crick. That's what I was looking for. A crick in your neck. It was so bad. On Monday, I couldn't move, and I was actually supposed to go to a harness cycle spin class with some gals, and I was going to have to cancel because the whole left side of my body was not moving. Right. Um, and luckily, somebody else had a conflict, so we rescheduled it. But I, I was <laughs> a I, crank. I, you were a crank. A crank. I, it really took a toll on me, so um, it's still... <laughs> you know, kind of hurts today and it's Thursday when we're recording, but, and then the other side started to hurt Mm. because I was overcompensating and favoring it. So that honestly has thrown me off all week is my neck. And we were, the funny thing is, is as I was editing some content the other day, we were shooting it like the day after it hurt because I just needed to get pictures done. And (laughs) half of the pictures, like I'm not moving the side of my neck and it looks so unnatural, but You did it. Yes. So that was definitely my low. And I'm hoping by like tomorrow or Saturday, it's gone. How does it feel today? Not a hundred percent. It definitely helps when I keep moving and keep it loose. Right. So, and you tend to be somebody that if you are in pain, you freeze and you favor it. And you I play, really I play fall possum. into I it. I really fall into it. Yes. Yes. I had the heating pad and we have this like little portable massager, but it was like one of those neck pains that it's not muscular. It's like you just have that. You guys know what I'm talking about. We've all had it. It's just in there and it kind of like shoots down your back. Anyway, I feel like Elizabeth right now talking about all of her ailments. Well, it is a bummer when you get a pain in your neck. and it just slows you down. It does. So but I'm glad that you're on the mend makes and that you, you feel better. Grateful for, you know, a, a healthy neck. A healthy neck. A healthy neck. So, mm-hmm. well, today we um, actually had... I'm going to interrupt you though. I do have a low. Oh, I forgot that you didn't mention your low. And what is that? But as I'm sitting here, I'm kind of laughing because... My bow and my low are both kind of about nails. Your mm. actual nails or nail heads? Well, the pumpkins are nail heads. And my low is that we had our oh. roof replaced. So the roofing guys, they appeared to clean up really well. I yes. mean, it's hard to get them all. And this week, all three of our cars have had flat tires. Yes. We have run over the nails. Yes. And dad has taken his car, my car, and he still has to take your car. Yes. We all have flat tires, flat tires from the nails. <laughs> so, you know, I love a good theme, but I didn't realize that my bow and my low would all be related to some sort of a nail. How funny that it all happened in the same week. Yeah, the Mini Cooper, the other day, she popped up and she said her tire pressure was low. She's hurt. She's, she's been punctured. She's been punctured. She's yes. been in. I just, I left her because she needs to heal. I haven't touched her since the other day and she's in the garage. Maybe you're think, having sympathy pains. Oh my gosh. You're so right, mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We feel the same thing. Mm-hmm. Also, somebody, sometimes I get random questions like about my car and I just wanted to circle back because it's almost been a year I need it to has. look up the one year anniversary of my mini cooper of, of um, the Bowmobile, and mm-hmm. I still love her she's wonderful I um she's never a sweetheart loved she's a sweetheart I've never loved a car more 
I was love at first sight. And if you're thinking about getting a Mini Cooper, I could not recommend it. I should be a spokesperson for mm -hmm. the Cooper community. Yes. <laughs> That'd be amazing, by the way. I know. That yeah. would be a great collab. Wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, organic. Yes. But yeah, so all the cars had flat tires. I mean, who would have thought? It is always just one thing after another. Yes. You fix one problem and then that creates another. Right. And it, what a random problem. I, I know. I am very grateful, knock on wood, that Elizabeth who is home for the weekend and is back at school with her car does not appear to have a flat tire. She seemed to have avoided that whole thing. We mm -hmm. must've just been all parking in the same spot. Another bow that I would just like to mention is I feel like our house is just so cozy these past few days oh and gosh. you did such a wonderful job um, decorating for fall. Thanks. And it just feels like a fall oasis. And I last night was sitting on the couch oh. after we had finished everything and you had the candle lit. And I was like, this is the coziest the house has felt. Well, since it's, you know, but the summer, but a long time. So that's so nice. Yeah, Thank you did a wonderful you. job decorating. And I linked all of our decorations on my LTK and I kind of did a little tour over on TikTok and Instagram, but most of the items were Amazon or Target. And I don't know, it just feels so cozy in well, here. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, so I am, we're not going to get into what we're discussing today on the podcast. We actually had a lovely follower and listener of the podcast reach out and she sent me this dm and um, i'll just read it out loud she said okay. hi there huge podcast fan i thought i'd share some topic ideas if you ever need some discussion points hmm. she then proceeded to share three points topics which i love we're actually going to talk about them today on the podcast great um hope this is helpful can't wait for the next pod love you and your fam so her name's brianne so thank <laughs> you brianne for first of all brainstorming and sending this to me because we always need podcast topics and ideas sometimes you know we just share what we have done throughout the week but we do love a good we love it discussion point so the first question is the this is like the best of so best of luxury bags shoes jewelry which do you wear most often held up the best over the years and which would you not repurchase now this could be pretty broad so if you just want to pick one to focus on I was thinking maybe fall luxury handbags that we have loved mm -hmm. over the years I know my answer if you need a minute to think about it well I haven't heard these questions but go ahead you say yours I have mine in my head now okay so I would say the best luxury fall handbag that I actually got for my birthday last year mm -hmm. that's per like the perfect bag for September October November but I use it year round I use it a lot over the summer um is my Gucci horse bit crossbody she's a classic mm -hmm. um it's I will insert a picture if you're watching this on YouTube but if not I've posted about this so many times on my Instagram but it comes with a leather strap and then it also comes with this really colorful like pretty youthful green and red like the classic Gucci pattern so you get two straps in one and it's just a little flap it holds a good amount it sits perfectly on your hip you can adjust the straps it is pricey like it's on the pricier side but I I, I love it I love it so much and it's the most quintessential fall purse and I'm really happy that I have it especially for this time of year what would well, your answer be first of all I'm glad that you liked your present last year so I love much my present that's a good one well I really I probably have two or three YSL bags large bags that I love for the fall yes and one is a tote it's all brown. It's brown leather. It doesn't have any like little feet on the bottom. So it's kind of an unstructured tote mm -hmm. and it comes in a bunch of colors, but I love the brown one. You have two colors, correct? We have discussed this before. It is not that outrageous for a designer handbag. That's correct. It For the size and for what it is, I feel like it's around $1,000. And yes, that is a lot. Yes, it is. But it's, I've had mine for years and I have it in a cream color, which I like in the spring. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, and it can kind of go for the whole summer. And then I have this brown and it's a saddle brown color and I love it. Yes. The only thing I will say about the bag is it does when you're using it a lot, not my brown one, but my cream one, it does wear in the corners and you can send it back. I've not done that. Okay. So that's one bag. And then I have another YSL bag that's a big tote. And it only will go on the crook, like on your wrist. Mm -hmm. So the downside is that you can't put it over your shoulder very easily, or you have to like really hike it up if you want to. Right. So if I'm running, if I'm running major errands, I prefer the YSL tote because I can put it on my shoulders mm -hmm. easily. If I'm just out and about and it's not major, then I like this other one and it's canvas and the edge is a brown, saddle brown leather. It's so I really perfect. like that for like end of summer through September. And what I also like about all three of these bags from YSL is 
you actually cannot tell where they're from. They're very understated. Yeah, they just they look like nice, obviously, in high quality, but it doesn't scream YSL, which I feel like is more your vibe, especially on a day to day basis. They're just like gorgeous leather mm-hmm. fall bags mm-hmm. that that would be. I all, can I can I mention one more because this is just dreamy to talk about handbags. I know. I also have a go yard that I've had for a number of years. It's structured and it goes over my shoulders. I really like a bag that I can also put over my shoulders for day to day. Yes. And it's the brown and black pattern, which is the one that I have as well. Yes. I I completely forgot. I don't know how my my all time favorite handbag to the end of time. <laughs> maybe unless I get some crazy handbag when I'm older, is my go yard tote. It is. The I use it every single day. I use it, it every day. Traveling, running errands. I love the pattern I chose because it fits into my life so well. And I think I wear those colors a lot, wouldn't mm-hmm. you say? It goes with neutrals. Um, if you're considering getting a Goyard, it is quite the investment. Their price points are a bit outrageous, but I have never used a bag more. And Claire uses hers all the time. Claire uses hers, and Elizabeth is receiving one for her birthday, which mm-hmm. she knows about. It's not a spoiler. Um, I just... I really love this these questions please the other thing I will say though if you are looking for a fall tote that um Cole's Lauren Conrad tote oh yes is on sale right now and that is so cute you've shown it before in the fall capsule wardrobe it's got the scalloped and it's just the perfect brown to me it's just a, a beautiful saddle colored brown that is a really great suggestion because if you obviously like certain luxury bags can obviously work for the entire year but if you do one like a rich chocolate brown this would be did you just say it'd be great for work did you I think you I didn't that. say that <laughs> okay. but it would be great for work and it that's is. kind of what we got it for when we created our curated our capsule wardrobe with the intention of gals wearing it to work and taking it to the office right and like you said I think it originally was like we bought it for 65 and it's now like 33 dollars all of those Kohl's purses always get mm-hmm. marked down so much okay can I throw in another please okay a little this is where I struggle is a fall small handbag Mm -hmm. for an event or going out in the evening. If you don't want to do black, I have a Bottega Venata. I never know how to say that. That little brown one. Yes, I love it. And I do, that's chocolate brown. And that's a perfect one for going out in the evening. I do really like that. The problem with that, and we we talked about this when we were in New York, there are so many dupes these days. It's it's like you almost don't even want to get anything else Bottega because – there are so like Amazon right. I feel like is just you know covered in which I'm all for a good do but that is a gorgeous purse and then we'll just we'll stop after this but the Nagiti that yes. I did get for the New York trip I really like that bag and we talked about it in another podcast but that is a great one if you get it in a autumnal type color that yes. could take you right through to the winter so I think we just covered a bunch of price points there I would say so I think that if you're looking for totes, those are some great suggestions. And it, if you're looking for, you know, a Christmas gift, something on the higher end side, we could always kind of expand mm-hmm. upon purses that we have loved over the years. But the first comes to mind is my Gucci crossbody. It's it's a winner. And I mm-hmm. love all of your totes from YSL. Um, Thanks. For shoes, I would say that was the second part to this. I would say that my Gucci loafers, if we're talking about the luxury side, my Gucci black loafers, I mean... What an investment. What a winner. They're so comfortable. They go with everything. Mm-hmm. And you can wear them throughout the entire year. But I mostly, her time to shine is is fall and winter for sure. What would I your, have mine on right now. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet that's the same answer for you. And I can walk to the ends of the earth and, in them. And sometimes I think that they could be more comfortable than tennis shoes. Hot take. Mm-hmm. Hot take. I'm right there with you. Yeah. And, and what I love is my Gucci loafers and my Gucci purse both have like the same horse bit. So it really looks... Com- like a complete outfit when I mm-hmm. pair them together I also love my Chanel ballet flats that I received Ooh. for I think it was Christmas those mm-hmm. are just such a classic I just have it in the quilted black and I'll have them for years they're comfortable again mm-hmm. you could walk I wouldn't say the ends of the earth but <laughs> but far but could you no not the ends of the earth but you could walk far and and I I don't have any Chanel ballet flats but I'm looking at the heel I like the Gucci heel because it's a little bit more substantial mm-hmm than a flat flat I like a little something yes and if you're you know listening to this I would say that a close second to the the Gucci loafers are the Sam Edelman loafers they are in the same department of comfort and style the horse bits are a little different but they come in so many different patterns and colors I have a pair on right now in like a woven sand color and they are very comfortable too I love those yes I have numerous pairs 
Claire, those are a great gift that we give to Claire for her birthday or Especially Christmas. Especially for work. How much yeah. are they? Like over 100 Um, Different patterns do different prices, but they're like a low 100 if they are 100 Okay. So and they go ex- on sale. Like I had a cool raffia pair this yeah. summer. So they're expensive, but not like outrageous. Not and they last like a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The next question that she had was work week with Emily. Discuss all the behind the scenes of what your work week looks like and how you manage your time and projects. Well, what a thoughtful question. I really would like to write a thank you note to Brienne because this is giving us nice structure. I said, this is great. You should be part of the team. Yes. (laughs) I responded to her. These are very well thought out. I know. Um, I mean, I feel like I always kind of get questions just being an influencer and in this industry, like there's not a lot of transparency about what is done. And I think a lot of people don't really realize all the different avenues of how you can make money and, um, you know, what you do all day, which is kind of understandable Mm -hmm. because it is so all over the place. What would you, I'm going to let you take it away since you're on the Emily on Bose team. Oh, well, I would say that the work week, we have Laura now coming on Wednesdays once a week, which mm-hmm. is very good because it kind of gets us structured. You you work your tail off pretty much every single day. <laughs> and I think we're trying to just gear it a little bit so you do have some breaks. I would have to sum it up with there's a lot of time. You've got different things you need to do. Editing takes a lot of time. Yes. I'm just speaking for you. Yeah. So I don't know. You have editing that you know you have to fill in at certain times you're editing the podcast both the audio and the visual your youtube videos and then any reels or tiktoks that you're going to do require lots of editing yes and i think you love editing i do like editing i do Mm -hmm. enjoy editing i don't some people i know like larger influencers um can sometimes delegate it and they have an editor on their team i don't actually know how people do that because i need like I know what I want to share in my voice Mm -hmm. and like what should stay in and what should not so that would be interesting I don't even know how they go about that I almost feel like it would take longer to send all the clips and the notes to an editor exactly I don't know enjoy it I do I do enjoy editing yes yes okay so that's a big component because you are on all platforms right also then we spend time at least two days doing photo shoots Mm mm-hmm and I take your pictures. I take all of your pictures, which it requires work. The weather has to cooperate. You have to have like a cool outfit that you want to share with everybody. We have to find a location or a spot. Which is not the easiest around it's here. It's not. It's not. And if you're trying to be creative or different. So, and then if you back it up a little bit, there are all those conversations that go along with it. What should you wear? Where could we go? Mm-hmm. What would be different? So I would say that there is a lot of brainstorming that is always taking place. Researching what we want to share, new items, like just for the costume, I posted a reel Mm. about Halloween costumes and that's a perfect example. You know, we had to come up with a list of what we wanted to, we'll think of the idea, which, you know, wasn't that hard because it's Halloween season and then come up with the costumes and then find all the components to the costume, make sure that they were at easy price points so we're not like breaking the bank for Mary Poppins and then order all those things everything came in and then we have to you know lay it all out try it all on to make sure that I don't look like a complete clown (laughs) right and then it goes and then um you know find a time to shoot and then shooting the content can take sometimes it goes really fast and you just like boom 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 and then sometimes lighting isn't working you know you're not I'm not working (laughs) yes and and I don't like the way I look or the outfit isn't showing up as well on camera so then the setup time can sometimes take longer than the actual shooting of the content right there's noise there's kids playing outside if we're doing it in the backyard there's you know extraneous things that we don't have control over right exactly um, so, and also then the whole, I'm going to call it like communication side of it. So emails, um, direct messages, I, mm-hmm. I probably get between, um, 10 to 30 Instagram direct messages a day. So, you know, responding to those, sending people links, communicating with brands, emailing them back and forth, making, um, selects for gifting, negotiating rates, looking over contracts. Sometimes that can take up to a month before you've actually figured out what your campaign is. And I think what else? There's just so many random things in a good way that pop up throughout our day. The mood boards also take a while because, you know, you need to brainstorm what the topic is. You need to research the items and then you actually need to create the mood boards. Um, yeah, we also have just... your line of merchandise. We do. 
And that's also, you know, you, I think that you do a good job in all areas, but it's also tricky to try and balance because this is how you're making a living. Mm -hmm. So when people do go to LTK and they buy something, then that's how you make a commission. Yes. So it's this fine line between you don't want to hound people with too much buying content, but ultimately you are a lifestyle and fashion and travel brand. So I think you do a very good job of balancing lifestyle and then also, you know, sharing because people do like your style. So they want to see different things. So I also think um, now more than ever, just like coming up with as many original ideas as possible and like sticking to being fresh and authentic. And Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we've been trying to do a lot more recently because it is kind of a competitive industry. You're fighting for screen time and you have to work against an algorithm that might not always be in your favor. But I think if you just love what you do, it almost doesn't really matter because you just want to share, you know, outfits or parts right. of your life that you've created. So, um, and well, then and I it, also think just like the way that I make money is also super unclear because I think people in who look at influencers and like, how, how, how do you make, how do you make money? Um, and even <laughs> to this day, I'm like, you know, you, you have to keep learning, but there's so many different I'm going to call it pillars and funnels and ways that I can make money throughout the month. And we do have um, not only, you know, follower goals, but financial goals that we try and hit each month Mm -hmm. and that we have been exceeding, which is great. So like you said, it's a balance between sharing content that's entertaining and fun and lighthearted, but also this is my job and making a living. Yes. Right. So I think that was a fun. (laughs) That is my answer to that question. If you want like if you have specific questions about influence, like if you want to get started, I could probably answer that. But as an overview, that's kind of what it I is. I think that was a good overview. Sometimes we, it does feel like a little bit of a fire drill and a in a good way. All of this right. is like always positive. Like we always have the most fun doing it. But sometimes it can be a fire drill. It's like, oh my God, there's a sale. Like we have to, you know, want to make sure to share all the content so that my followers know about it and that I can be as helpful and you know, valuable as possible to those Mm -hmm. who are on the other side of the phone and, you know, making sure that they're getting as much out of me as possible, because I do want to be a helpful resource for people and not just like, oh, look at all these outfits or look at what I'm doing, you know, for girls who go into the office, you know, I'm always thinking of outfits for them or for ladies who need um, gift guide ideas. It's just, I think as an influencer, always thinking of like the the shopper and and helping them as much as possible. The other component, which are dear podcast listeners know is the technology portion of it literally I mean you guys know it more than anyone just getting the equipment going to guitar center and then there's also you know the other day we went and got new tripods because we more than once have snapped the tripods and then they break yes and I think the last two weeks have been really nice because we have new tripods. We do have new tripods, but we even invested like- in, you know, a $60 tripod instead of the $14.99 one at Target. And it has made a big difference because if you are doing YouTube and you're vlogging, so like for the Halloween costume thing, we had two tripods set up, one with your phone on it and one with your camera mm-hmm. so that you could do reels and TikToks on the phone and then you could vlog with your camera. And I felt I felt very efficient. Streamlined it completely. I think the investment of the sixty dollar <laughs> tripod was um, something that will repay itself so quickly. Right. For- and I, I think for any profession, and I feel like a lot of people investing in things that are important yeah. to your career or whatever is very important because in the end it makes your life easier. I couldn't agree with you more. You don't have to go crazy, yeah. but just if there is something or you are dedicated to doing something, having the proper equipment really helps. We can't stress enough how (laughs) how helpful that is. Like even right before we were filming this, like my one lens on this camera wasn't working the past few days. So Mm -hmm. we had to figure that out. And then like an SD card, we had to order some new SD cards because there wasn't enough storage. So just like having all those things lining up and working well, I I can't even tell you how amazing it feels. And even thinking about your own life and what you do as a job, like what could make your life easier? Ordering the SD card is making our life easier. We ordered a backup battery for the camera. So I'm actually sitting here thinking, what could make my life a little bit easier for myself, like what I'm doing? It is really nice to have like people in my life who are other influencers who I'm friends with, Mm -hmm. like Fran and Louise and Abby, because 
the other day it was like a Friday night and I texted Louise and I was having issues with when you go on my Instagram and you comment link, you get a direct message sent to you with all the links. And it really, as a influencer, boosts your sales. It is very valuable to have. And so the other day, it like it wasn't working and I had a question about mm-hmm. it. So I texted Louise and she got back to me right away. And it was like a seven o'clock on a Friday night and she totally understood. And so that was also really helpful to have people that you can bounce ideas off of. Mm-hmm. Um, I was that gonna was say nice something of her. That was really no, literally, nice she's the nicest person ever. Like yeah. she's so helpful, and nice. she even taught me how to do it. So that is like amazing. Something else that I wanted to talk about is merchandise is a, another huge component, and mm-hmm. it does go in waves. Like right now, we are prepping for some new merchandise to come out and some new products, and so that is something that you really are fantastic at because Thanks. we have to obviously decide what we want to put out and release, and then research the items, order them as a to test it out to make sure that it works oftentimes we're working with our graphic designer abby and that can take a few weeks to come up with the design that everyone's happy with a few Mm -hmm. iterations of it a few rounds of it as you will Mm -hmm. and um yeah then we order the product we see how we like it and then we have to decide the number and look at our past sale records and how we did with other products similar to kind of guesstimate Mm -hmm. how many we want to have and then have a photo shoot make sure that all those items are up on the website count inventory and then the shipping and receiving you know last week we just had a, an influx of order so you're the one who packages those and mm-hmm. drops those off and stuff like that so that's kind of a whole other arm that runs on itself and sometimes it's busier when we're releasing a line and then other times there's a little bit more of a lull so that goes up and down but um even just like more so now reaching out to brands and communicating with them and creating a relationship. And so I don't, I mean, guys, it's just like, it's just like any other job. You wear so many different hats and some weeks there's one thing you have to focus on and other weeks there's, you know, something else that pops up, but it's so much fun and it really works the creative side of our brain, which is frankly the, my favorite part of my brain <laughs> It is, and yeah. we get to work on it together mm-hmm. so I think and with Laura like having a team I can't stress to you enough and she brings just like such a fresh set of eyes to the she whole does. you know and it yeah. just makes it efficient and really dad and Claire and Elizabeth like I feel like everyone in the family is supportive yes yes and helpful and brainstorming ideas or if if they think of something they yes, send it they do and I also something that I always try to focus on the most would probably be my engagement on all of my platforms mm-hmm. I think that that is like the best way if you're looking to be a content creator and you want to get started it can sometimes be overwhelming with how many content creators there are how many influencers and how to get followers but it really all comes down to the engagement <clears throat> and working with brands and excuse me I have a tickle um negotiating fees all they're looking at is engagement so if you that's like something that you your community and the loyalty of your followers is so important so invest your time in connecting with people because it's it's real gals I mean I'm talking to you ladies oh, yeah. all week long and having like fabulous real life conversations that I love like I just love the mm-hmm. even though I work I'm, I work remotely and I you know live live at home I still feel like I'm always talking with people mm-hmm. from all over the place which is so nice Yes. You do have very loyal, kind. Yes. Nice followers. So anyway, that is a little bit more about me. That was kind <laughs> of a fun. I, I didn't was. know we were going to go that way. And that was really fun to talk about. I Yeah, I she mentioned it. And I thought, well, if, you know, she reached out and took the time to wrote, write such a lovely message, maybe other people wanted to know about Does, it. Did Brianne send any other questions? She said, ranked travel, rank your favorite places you have traveled to and rank the places you really want to go to. Gosh, Brienne. This brilliant, is brilliant girl. Brilliant. She's so okay. smart. My favorite place. What's your favorite place? I would say that in the United States, my favorite place um, is probably Palm Beach. And I love it. Out of the U.S., I would say um, Greece was amazing. I loved Marbella in Spain. Um, I also Zurich. loved Zurich. Yes. And um, what what else? What would your spots be? Well, I'm kind of right there with you. I love Palm Beach. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of have like I, I, I it's hard to pick one thing. I want to have like different categories. Like I know some place that I like to go repeatedly. And then there are other places that have just been exciting to see once. But I don't like I loved seeing Greece. Mm-hmm. I've only been there one time. And we went to Mykonos and Athens and Santorini. We went someplace else there, but I don't, I don't really, 
I don't have any interest to go back. Right. Like you saw it, you did it. I would go back. But so I think that's a con- I mean, yes, I would go back. But I think I would like to see some other places first. Yeah. Beyond that. Um, when I was in college, I went with my dad on a business trip and I went to Singapore and Hong Kong yeah, that's and cool. Taipei. And I at the time I didn't know if I really wanted to be gone from my boyfriend, which is now my husband. <laughs> Because we were gone for a while, and I am always so grateful that, yeah, that is I really went. Cool. It was cool. It was a cool trip, and I don't think I'm going to go to those places again. I hope to go to those places, yeah, but um, I feel like I'm trying to think what other places in the United you know States that I'd I love, love to go to. I just love San Diego. Yeah, you always say that. You <laughs> love San Diego. Like, I love, I know they're having, like, everyone's having strange weather, but I, I love San Diego weather. It is fabulous. Yes. I just I think that's so. a beautiful place. I love visiting New York City. I, I would never want to live there. Um, but I love I love going every single time. I, I love like London. I love London. <laughs> I mean, like, we could just go through should we different get a map things. out right, right now. Yeah. Um, but that was really nice. Those were great questions. Yeah. From so Brianne. those were her three questions that she asked. I think that we might need to have her on retainer as part of the Bose and Company podcast team because her brainstorming ideas were fabulous. I know, they were so good. Okay, I'm looking at my phone because. Yeah, have you received some requests throughout the week of what we should talk about? Yeah, and, and I I should have. Um, I just screenshotted hers because I just got it today. So it was perfect timing. Well, here's a sweet person. Her name's Allie. Yes. And Hello, it says, Allie. Hi, Anne. So inspired by you. Any chance you'll be doing any Thanksgiving tablescape inspo this year? Okay, Allie, I'm going to do it now that you've asked. 100% we're going to do it, Allie. We're not going to let you down. <laughs> My fiance and I bought a house last year and are hosting our first Thanksgiving. Well, that's amazing. That's exciting. That's, you know what? That is exciting. The first Thanksgiving. That's thrilling. Okay, I'll respond to you later, Allie, because I can't type and talk. But we are going to do... We are most definitely going to mock up a Thanksgiving tablescape for everyone in case you're hosting or if this is your first year hosting, you know, it's got to yes. be good. Yes. You want to wow everyone. Alrighty, everyone. Well, thank you so much for Brianna for submitting all those questions and guiding this wonderful podcast episode today. I think that's everything we're going to talk about. And if you want me to touch upon any other topics that we mentioned more in depth, just let us know. We are a direct message away. I hope you all have a great week. Thank you so much, Anne, for joining us today. We're also ahead of schedule. We usually record this like last minute on a Sunday night, but it's Thursday. So go us. Super organized. <laughs> you know us. Super yes, organized. Yes. Good. Um, so be sure to follow me on all of my socials. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And remember that everything is, in fact, better with a bow. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.